All right, thanks for coming and welcome to another delicious edition of Dr. Payam Show. And why do I say delicious? Because today I will calculate the volume of a donut. In fact, funny story, once I flew from San Francisco to Portland just to eat a donut. It was called Voodoo Donuts and it was really worth the trip. But now I found out that apparently they have one in LA as well. So I don't need to fly to Portland anymore, even though it's a very nice city. Okay, <clears throat> so what do you want to do? Let's calculate. Calculate the volume of a donut. Of the donut obtained by rotating the following disc by rotating the disc of center 4 comma 0 and radius 3 about the y-axis So what am I doing? Basically, again, I take this big fat circle of center four comma zero and of radius three. This is three. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this disc and rotating it about the y-axis. So in the end, the picture does look sort of like a donut. Or mathemat mathematicians call a torus. So maybe this is not a very artistic rendition, but it's supposed to look something like that, so, which in fact is a donut. <clears throat> and now I want to calculate the volume of this donut using two ways that people learn in calculus. First, using the washer method, and then using the shell method. And of course, there are other ways of doing this using multivariable calculus, but let's keep it simple and simple, I guess, simple variable calculus. So, so the first method is called the washer method, and it's based on slicing the donut in a clever way, you know, the washer way. So, <laughs> method one, washer method. So think of the donut in a second as a bagel, so a sweet bagel. And the way you want to do this is you want to take the donut and slice it horizontally, just as if you want to open up a bagel and schmear it, you know, with uh, cream cheese or whatever you like. So again, consider this thing, the donut in this way. Da, 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 da. And again, you know, they're, they're, I'm not an artist, so there might be a better picture. But more importantly, notice that, in fact, if you slice it in this way, if you slice it um, horizontally, then the slices are precisely what are called washers. Or in math, we call those analyte. And the main property of the analy is that they have an outer radius and an inner radius. So in other words, given a certain point y, there's a certain inner radius here and a certain outer radius. And in order to find that inner radius and that outer radius, let's actually use the equation of this circle. So remember that the circle here, or disk, it has center of four comma zero, and here it has radius three. So by the equation of the circle, the equation is x minus four squared plus y squared equals to three squared, which is nine. And notice, in order to find that inner radius and that outer radius, 
what we really have to do is to solve for y, which is given in terms of x. So again, maybe let me draw this here. So given a certain point y, we want to find the corresponding x coordinates. And for this, we have to use the equation of the circle. So x minus y squared, x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals to 9 gives you the following. And again, we want to solve for everything in terms of y. So x minus 4 squared equals to 9 minus y squared. So in particular, x minus 4 equals to plus or minus square root of 9 minus y squared, which gives you that x equals to 4 plus or minus square root of 9 minus y squared. And that is precisely what we want. Namely, this gives us, in fact, that the outer radius, given a certain y, is 4 plus square root of 9 minus y squared, and the inner radius is 4 minus square root of 9 minus y squared. And this sort of makes sense in this picture, namely given y, we want some number that is slightly bigger than 4, which gives you, you know, 4 plus square root of 9 minus y squared, and here, we want a number that's slightly smaller than 4, which gives you 4 minus 9 minus y squared. And that's good, because once we have the inner radius and the outer radius, we can just use the washer method. So, just to recap, so the outer radius, that's 4 plus square root of 9 minus y squared, and the inner radius is 4 minus square root of 9 minus y squared. And the question is, how do you find then the area of each annulus? Well, in terms of inner and outer, it's precisely given by the following. It's the area of the bigger disk which is pi outer squared minus the area of the smaller disk, which is pi inner squared. So release your inner squared, which tells you precisely that the volume becomes the integral of this, which just means, you know, adding up the slices, and we're adding them up from minus um, from minus 3 to 3, because our y goes to minus 3 to 3. So it becomes volume equals to integral from minus 3 to 3 of pi outer square minus pi inner square dy. And we're integrating with respect to y because we're adding up the horizontal uh, washers not the vertical ones. So this becomes pi times integral from minus 3 to 3 of the outer one, which is 4 plus square root of 9 minus y squared, squared minus 4 minus square root of 9 minus y squared dy. And guess what? Let's have another expansion party. So, this becomes pi times integral for minus 3 to 3 of 16 plus 8 square root of 9 minus y squared plus this square root squared, which is 9 minus y squared, and then minus 16, then minus minus, which is plus 8 times square root of 9 minus y squared, and then minus this squared becomes minus 9 minus y squared dy. And look, there's bang, bang, and bang, bang. So everything cancels out, except for those two terms, which add up pretty nicely. So what we're left with is the following, pi times, integral for minus 3 to 3 
of 8 plus 8, which is 16, times 9 minus y squared dy, that becomes 16 pi integral from minus 3 to 3, square root of 9 minus y squared dy. But look, you could use a trig substitution, but why make stuff complicated when we make, can make them easier? Because notice, in fact, in terms of areas, this represents a semicircle. Right? Square root of 9 minus y squared in terms of y from minus 3 to 3. So this integral is just the area of this semicircle, which becomes, you know, half of pi r squared. So 1 half pi times 3 squared. So you get 16 pi times pi times 3 squared over 2. And then you can simplify this a little bit. So 16 over 2 is 8. 8 times, eight times 9 is 72. So in the end, you have 72 pi squared. So it's more delicious than pi, it's a pi squared. Okay. And by the way, you know, in general, what does that have to do with the given numbers that we're given? So this really becomes, if you want, 2 times 4 times 3 squared times pi squared. And this 4 is as in the point 4 comma 0. And this 3 is as in the given radius in goes to 3. So in general, if you had the point a comma 0, this would be 2a times b squared, where the radius is b. Okay. All right, so almost thank you for watching. But remember, we have another method, which I believe makes stuff a bit easier. And that's the shell method which is, it's more complicated to visualize, but once you visualize it, the calculation becomes easier. Okay, so method two, the shell method, like the gas, you know, for petroleum, okay? And for this, as I said, it's harder to visualize, but you can sort of decompose the area, the volume in terms of shells. So again, take the, you know, the disk of center 3 comma 0, sorry, 4 comma 0, and radius 3, rotate it about the y-axis, so you get their beautiful donut. Beautiful, tasty donut. And notice you can, as, again, as usual, um, decompose the circle, the disk, in terms of rectangles. So if you do that, like sort of like Riemann sums, if you do that and take those rectangles and rotate them across the y-axis, You in fact get, and this is hard to see, but you in fact get some shells. And the point is the volume just becomes, you know, the integral of the area of those little shells. So what do we have here? Again, we have those little shells. And let's figure out, again, you know, the height and the radius of the shells. So. Again, if you have this point x, let's figure out the height. And to figure out the height, let's again use the equation of the disk. So the equation of the disk then is x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals to 9, which is 3 squared. And here, unlike before, we want to solve for y in terms of x. So given x, let's find the corresponding y. So 
let's just solve this. What we have is y squared equals to 9 minus x minus 4 squared. And so y becomes square root plus or minus square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared, which tells us in some sense that the top point then becomes square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared, and the bottom point is minus that. Not minus 9 minus x minus 4 squared. Okay. So we're almost done. What do we have here? So we know that the radius is x, and the question is, what is the height? Well, it's this minus this, which in the end becomes 2 times this jump. So again, we have the radius equals to x, and the height in this case becomes 2 times square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared. Which tells us, well, what then becomes the area of each shell? Well, the area becomes 2 pi times the radius, so 2 pi x. So, 2 pi x times the height, which is, again, 2 times this thing. So, 2 times square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared, which becomes... 4 pi x square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared. And then all we have to do, the last thing, is take this area and integrate it from x going from 0 to, um, sorry, from x going from, so 4 minus 3, which is 1, and then 4 plus 3, which is 7. So really the range of x here is from 1 to 7. Okay. So let's do that. So by the shell method, the volume becomes, again, integral from, what was it, 1 to 7, of the area, which is 4 pi x square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared, dx, and let's try to simplify this a little bit, so that becomes 4 pi integral from 1 to 7 of x square root of 9 minus x minus 4 squared, dx, and now let's use a nice change of variables, and you're tempted to use u equals to this whole thing, but again let's make our life a bit easier. Let's just let u be just x minus 7, then du equals to dx, and also u of 1 is minus 3, and u of 7 is 3, and you can see that there is a you know, very nice symmet symmetrization, if you'd like. This becomes 4 pi integral from minus 3 to 3, of x, which becomes u plus 4, times square root of 9 minus u squared du. Now, it looks like we made this problem more complicated than it actually is, but it turns out this integral is very easy to evaluate, because if you expand this out, so another expansion party, we get integral from minus 3 to 3 of u times 9 minus u squared u plus 4 pi integral from minus 3 to 3 of 4 times square root of my 9 minus u squared du. But look, here we're integrating from minus 3 to 3, and moreover, this thing is an odd function. And there's this nice property about odd functions that if you integrate an odd function from minus something to something, like from minus 3 to 3, or from minus 2 to 2, 
the integral actually becomes zero, which term means that then once we calculate this, the integral is automatically zero. And here, it's the same spiel as before. This just becomes a semicircle. So the area becomes 4 pi times 4 times integral from minus 3 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx, if you'd like, which becomes you know, pi times 3 squared over 2. And then as before, this becomes 16 over 2, which is 8. So 8 times 9 times pi times pi, so lots of pi, which in fact becomes 72 pi squared. So guess what? In the end, with a different method, we still get the same result. And you might say, which one is better? Well, it depends on what kind of person you are. So the washer method is easier to visualize, but gives you usually a nastier integral. The shell method is really hard to visualize, but it gives you an easier formula in the end. All right, so if you like that and like math and calculus in general, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.